Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the total time spent on a job. Now you can use this technique whether it's employees and a time clock or whether you have projects and doing job costing and you're billing customers for the total hours spent on a job. In any case, we're going to take a time in and a time out. We're going to calculate the total minutes or hours and then I'll show you how to calculate the total per job. Today's question comes from Adam from Fort Dodge, Iowa, one of my developer students. Adam says, I have a series of jobs that have a start date and an end date. I need to be able to calculate the total time worked on each job so I can bill my customers accordingly. Additionally, sometimes the job might start on a Thursday and end on a Monday. I need to exclude weekends after hours from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next day and lunch breaks from noon to 1 p.m. How do I do this? Well, Adam, I'm going to tackle the first part in this video and we'll save the second part for the extended cut for the members video. Figuring out the total time between a start time and an end time is relatively easy and I'm going to show you how in just a minute. Putting exclusion zones in the middle there and excluding things like weekends, that's pretty tough and that's going to involve some programming. But let's tackle the first part right now. Okay, here I am in a blank database. Let's create a table to store our information. This will be my, my time clock table. So we'll start off with an ID. That's my auto number. Every table should have one. Then I'm going to put in here a job ID. Now, if you're using this to track employees, that could be the employee ID or customers, customer ID, whatever you want to put in there. I'm going to use job ID. Then we're going to have a time in a date time and a time out. You could put date time if you want to for the field name. I'm just going to use time in and time out. You should track this with a full date time value instead of just a time if you ever plan on going across midnight. So if you're going from Monday to Tuesday, for example, an overnight shift or like Adam's database where he's got uh, jobs that go over multiple days, then you want to use full date time values in here, but you can just call it time in, time out. That's fine. All right, let's save this. I'll call this my time clock, T, primary key, yes, that's the ID right there. Let's put some sample data in here. Okay, so job one, let's say this was started on 1-1 at 9 a.m. and went from 1-1 to 3 p.m., okay? Same job, next day goes from 1-2 at 10 a.m. to 1, 2 at 5 p.m. Okay, next job comes in, job two. This one they work on it on 1, 2 from 9 a.m. until 1, 4 a couple days later. And I forgot to put a time in there, that's okay. We'll just come back over here and change it at 3 p.m. So that went across a couple days there. Now, this is easier if you track these times as the employee is working or they clock in, they clock out. In other words, they come in in the morning, they clock in, they take a lunch break, they clock out at noon, all right, then clock back in and that's another record for one o'clock. That's the best and easiest way to set your database up, but that involves the most work on the part of your employees. They have to remember to clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. All right, let's put a couple more records in here. Let's say job one gets some more time on it, one six at 3 p.m., to 1, 6 at 5.30 p.m. Okay, a couple hours there. And then back to job two one more time. 1.10 at 9 a.m. to 1.11 at 3 p.m. Okay, got some sample data. That should be enough for now. So now we're ready to make our query. Now the query is going to do the bulk of the calculations for us. So close the table down, save changes, sure. Create, query design. I'm going to bring in my time clock table. Close that up. All right, what do we want to see? I don't care about the ID. Let's bring in the job ID. Let's bring in time in and time out. ID if you want it. I don't really care for it right now. I'm going to save this as my time clock queue. All right, right now we just got the same information we typed in. Now there are lots of different ways to take the difference between two date time values using access. I did a video a few years ago on how to simply use math. You can subtract 
one time from another or one date from another, and you get a difference in days because in access, one day is basically equal to one. So if I subtract time two from time one and I get one, that's one whole day. Well, if you divide that by 24, now you got an hour. Divide that by 60, you got minutes. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. It's simple enough. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use date diff. Now, I've also done a free video on date diff. I'm going to put links to both of these videos down below. If you want to go watch those first, go ahead. But I only showed you how to do it with, with days, with dates. So I'm going to show you how to use it with times in this video. So here's date diff and the parameter that you use to tell date diff what you are subtracting, right? Years, quarters, months, day of the year, day. Then we got weekday, week, hours, minutes, and seconds. Notice that minute is N because month is M. So remember that. It's very important. I mess that up all the time, right? Minute is N. So I'm going to come in here and calculate the total minutes between time out and time in. All right. Total minutes is going to be date diff N, right? N for minutes. That goes first, comma, time in, comma, time out. All right. Let's save that and see what we get. Look at that. That gives you the total minutes between these two times. Now, for most real-world practical applications, minutes are good enough. You can do this with seconds if you want to. If you're doing some kind of, you know, uh, calculations on, uh, you know, machine timing or something really crazy, you could do this with seconds. But for most, you know, employee time clocks for uh, for job costing, minutes are good enough. If you need to build to the second, then you'll have to tweak this a little bit. I'm not going to go into seconds right now. All right, so back to design view. So once I've got the total minutes, I'm just going to shrink these up a little bit here so we can see them. Once we've got the total minutes, there we go. Now we can calculate the hours. Now hours we might want as a fraction, right? If you want two minute, you know, two hours, 30 minutes is two and a half hours. So I'm going to call this fract hours, all right? Fract, F-R-A-C-T, hours. And this is going to be the total minutes divided by 60. All right, save it and run that. There you go, fract hours. So that's six hours, that's seven hours, that's two and a half hours. Okay, sometimes if you got like 301 in here, let me see if I can get it to do it. Yeah, see, sometimes you get really long, crazy values like that. So we're just going to round that. Back to design, round that however you want. I'm going to say round that to one decimal place. That's good enough for me for billing, right? Tenths of an hour. Okay, close enough. That way, if you come in here and you make this 315, let's say, let's see what we get. Yeah, 6.2 hours. You could go, you can go to two decimal places if you really want to. If you want to get exact, if your employees are complaining that you didn't pay them for every, every minute, right? That's usually good enough. Now, right here, we have enough to go by. We can use this to do the rest of our calculations. Right, we could put this into our, you know, total hours uh, worked or total hours we're billing for job one, for example, and just do a summary on summary on this. And I think we're good to go. But I want to show you a couple more little tricks that you can do here if you really want. If you want to display it as hours and minutes or in a different format altogether, like if you looked on the slide that I had, where'd my slide go? Like right down here, I did four hours thirty minutes like that. Or you could do four colon thirty if you want to display it that way. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the total number of hours first, basically chop off the fractional part, how, figure out how many minutes are left, and then display it like this. All right, so you can display it like that two hours, 45 minutes on their job costing sheet instead of showing them, you know, 4.5 hours. And this all is totally up to you if you want to do this. All right, how do we do it? Let's go into design view again. All right, we got this. We're going to use fractional hours for our major calculations later. But, all right, let's figure out the total hours. Now, total hours is going to be total minutes and then we're going to use integer division 60. Notice it's a backslash. Keep forgetting I can zoom in now. I got new new video software. I can zoom in. I, I haven't been using it. All right. That backslash there, which is different from the, oh, I didn't do it over here. I different from the forward slash, which is in here. Yeah. See that? That's regular division where you get a floating point. That's integer division. All right. The backward slash. That says that says, just give me the integer portion. Just get rid of anything after the decimal point. 
Okay, so now let's see what the total. Let's 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 change this from total hours to whole hours. Let's do that. Let's make that whole hours. I don't like total hours. Let's do whole hours. And round it. And there's whole hours. See? Six, seven, fifty-four, two, and thirty. Now we need to know how many minutes are left over. All right, put that over here. Well, minutes left, minutes left is going to be total minutes minus total hours times 60, or whole hours, right? Whole hours times 60, like that. And there we go, right? Six hours, 15 minutes left. Seven hours, nothing left. Two hours, 30 minutes left. Now we can display this however we want to. All right, you can come over here and say, let's call it, um, let's call it uh, display time one is going to be, let's go uh, whole hours and the word hours, comma, and uh, minutes left and minutes like that. I spell the whole thing out. See, if you're doing like movie times, for example, you might want it like that. Six hours, 15 minutes, zero minutes. You could even throw an if in there if you want to get crazy, right? Check this out. We could even say, let's get the comma space out of there and put it in, let's say right in here. We're going to go, we're going to go if minutes left is greater than zero comma we're going to put that comma space and the minutes left like that else blank that should get rid of the minutes if it's zero let's see ha look at that All right it checks to see if minutes left is zero if it is it doesn't bother putting it there it just puts a blank all right that's the if function immediate if that's a big long one here i'll pop that out for you see Whole hours and hours if, right, minutes left is greater than zero. That says it's an if then statement. I have videos on if too. It's a very popular function. I'll put another link down below for you. All right, if minutes left is greater than zero, comma, put that, that comma space ampersand that taxis together string concatenation. Again, more videos for string concatenation. I got this. You could just basically spend the whole time just learning from all these free videos I've been putting online, which is great. I love it. I love teaching people. All right, and then tack on the minutes on the end of it. Or you could you could do any format you want. All right, you could do, let's say uh, display time two is gonna be format um, whole hours comma zero zero like that and a colon and format whole uh, minutes left comma zero zero like that. What will that do? Well, format zero, 00, that forces it to display it with two digits for the time. And now we've got that, see? Otherwise, you'd get just 2 colon 30 instead of instead of uh, 0, 2, 30. Or if, it's, if you've got one minute over here, you might, even get, uh, you might even get 2 colon 1, which you don't want. So you want to force that to format with the format function. All right, so now I've showed you how to pull all these things apart. Right, we could do it as fractional hours. That's how I prefer it for doing calculations. All right, or you can. This is good for display, though. If you want to show it, like on an invoice or on a timesheet at the very bottom. You know, this week you worked 40 hours and 30 minutes, or whatever. All right, now we can take this and feed it into an aggregate query. Now, again, if you don't know what an aggregate query is, I've got videos on it. Go watch that first. I'll put a link down below. Go find the link that says aggregate queries. Watch that one and come back here. An aggregate query basically lets you take the results from a table or query and add stuff together and group it. So if you look at this data here, we want to group together everything for customer one, these three records, and customer two, or job two in my case, I'm sorry, right? And then sum up fractional hours. Make sense? That's the total amount of time to either pay this employee or bill this customer. So we'll do that in an aggregate query. So create, query design, this time I'm going to bring in my time clock queue. All right. I want the job ID because that's what I'm grouping by. 
and then I want fractional hours. That's what I'm calculating on. Now I'll turn on totals to make an aggregate query. I want to group by job ID and sum, there's a whole bunch of functions in there, sum fractional hours. Save this as uh, job cost Q. All right, and then run it, and there's my total job cost. And it says sum of fract hours. We can change that. We can change that by giving it an alias right here, total hours, colon, like that. And then run. See? Groups them by job. There's, there's a unique record for each job ID. And then total hours, the hours are summed up. So that covers part one of Adam's question, how to calculate the time worked on each job between the start date and the end date. Part two of the question we will cover in the members extended cut. You have to exclude weekends, exclude after hours, and breaks. How do you do that? Well, I built it in a 40-minute extended cut where we basically set up an exclusion table. You can see it right down here. Exclusion start and end times. You can make as many exclusion zones as you want. Here we've got 5 p.m. to midnight is excluded, right? 12 a.m. to 9 a.m. is excluded. 12 a.m. to 8.59. We go one minute shy because 9 a.m. you actually technically start work again, okay? Then noon to 1 is our lunch break, and then we've got like a coffee break in here from 3 to 3.30 just to test that. But you could set up as many as you want in the exclusion table. We exclude weekends as well, right? This way, if you have a project where it's you've just got a start time and an end time and you want to just exclude all of these in the middle zones and figure the total amount of billable time to either bill the client or pay the employee or whatever you're doing. You hit the button, takes a second, boom, and it counts that. So that is the 41 minute extended cut for silver members and up. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different perks that are available. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making them, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and share. Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and be notified of any new releases. Check for additional resources down below the video. Click the show more button and you'll see a list of other links to other videos, downloads, resources, lessons, and lots more. If you have not yet tried my free access level one course, it's three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, Level two is just $1, and that's free for my members. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page, and you can post your question there. Also, be sure to stop by my access forum on my website. And also look for me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross with AccessLearningZone.com. Thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you next time.